What's happening, everybody? Good to see everybody here. Let's see, what's going on? <clears throat> uh, Matt Bell with Electric Violin Shop, as you can see. We're, uh, again, live streaming with this uh, new technology we've been working with. I'm really excited about it, and I hope that uh, it helps you guys to see and understand what we're doing here a little bit better. Uh, one of the big changes that's going to mean a lot to you guys is that we are... I'm using uh, an interface to plug into the computer now instead of going with a phone. And it means that you're not just hearing like what the microphone on my iPhone was doing, which is pretty stinking good. Obviously, I'm, I'm really impressed with how good the microphones are on an iPhone. But it's still not as good as like a studio mic and a direct connection which is what we have now. So I've got a studio mic here. Hello, hello. So studio mic here picking up my voice in the room. And then um, I've got a direct, I'm actually plugged directly into a Fishman Loudbox Mini. And you guys are hearing that from the Mini. Uh, or, no, the artist. It's an artist. What's a Mini or artist between friends? Um, Fishman Loudbox artist. And let me see if I'll show you what the settings on that are. My goodness, right there. So that's the direct, that's what the, the settings on the artist are. Um, the mic is picking up a little bit of that, but what you're mostly hearing is the direct sound of the violin. And then when I do some, when I do some trials for you guys, I will actually turn the microphone off and then you'll only hear the direct sound of the violin coming through the loud box. I've kept the, uh, I've kept the EQ flat on that and I've just put some reverb on there just so that it doesn't sound like the violin's plugged directly into your skull. Um, but I don't change the setting on that. So when we go from instrument to instrument, it's going to be an apples to apples to apples to apples comparison, right? So, uh, hey, Shauna Tucker's here. She just did a uh, she just did a, a video on how to do better at live streaming. So maybe she can give me some tips. Hi. <laughs> I'm only, well, I don't know. Well, I can give you some tips, but they're all on the video. Oh, they are. They all yeah, are in the video. They're all on the video, which is on YouTube. <laughs> I'm, this is. is not a shameless plug, you guys. I'm over here because, as you can see, first of all, usually we are looking at a screen here and a screen right. here, and we have to like stand like right. not socially distant, right? Wait. It's cool. Or, I've been tested. My oh, doctor tells me I can't get it again. Dr. Heidi. Yeah. Yay. Bless yeah. her heart. Well, I haven't, so stay back there. <laughs> so, but this is like there's a new setup. There's like a fancy mic over here, and there's like a dual like input thing that I talk about. You should like fancy. totally do that, so it probably sounds better. So I want to go over there and hear what you're doing. Yeah. And make sure that you're doing it right. Yeah. Make sure I'm doing it right. If I'm not, let me know. Okay. Shana's very shy. She won't tell me if I'm not doing it right. Oh, <laughs> Shyness is not one of the attributes. Um, so anyway, we are today, we're going to be comparing, um, some thousand dollar and under violins for you guys. And that's going to be very exciting. Um, and not going to be very exciting. It is very exciting. I'm very excited. So one of the cool things that I can do with this is, um, is I can play some pre-recorded audio for you. What's up, Debbie? And Nick is here. Nick's always here. God bless him, Nick and your free bird requests. Um, so yeah, so we're I pre-recorded some audio this morning so that you guys can hear these violins back to back to back to back without me having to like set it down and unplug and replug and all that. Um, so yeah, Faraday, hey, what's going on, buddy? We're not hitting those today. That'll probably be the next time. Um, these are the thousand dollar and under category. Next time we'll do like a thousand to two thousand. We'll be in that price range. So this time we are comparing. Let's go through them. The uh, Yamaha YEV. I just had the NS Design Wave in my hand. The Gava Novita and the Wood Violins Stingray. All right. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click over. What's up? Keep. What's up, Akiva? And we're going to watch these videos back to back to back to back. We're going to start with the Novita. And this is this is going to be just the Novita plugged into the Fishman Loudbox Artist um, direct signal. So you guys are hearing just the instrument itself. <laughs> Thank 
All right, so we're back with you guys. Um, I hope you're able to hear. <laughs> I promise it's not the Rona. It's, uh, it's seasonal allergies. The pollen is insane around here right now. Uh, but you definitely get the side eye from people anytime you cough right now. It's uh, a little different than it used to be. It used to be when you had allergies, people were like, oh, I feel sorry for you. And now people are like, you need to stay away from me. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, the switching instruments thing that you just saw, uh, I had said before, that was actually pre-recorded. I mean, pre-recorded like an hour ago. You tell because I'm wearing the same shirt. Um, this shirt comes out like once a month. It's on my calendar. Um, that's not true. Um, so yeah, that was actually pre-recorded so that we could switch, uh, from one to the other pretty fast. Um, so now you guys can see on the screen, we've got some pictures of the different colors of waves that are here. And we're actually, there's actually some more. Let's play this first. Um, So that's the NS Design Wave. <clears throat> really, really like this violin. And um, so we've got price up here. Let me click on that. Okay, so $6.99 for the four string, $7.59 for the five string. Uh, it does come with a custom case. This is a really differently shaped violin. This thing looks a lot different from a regular violin. Um, so obviously it has to have a custom case. To go in the case, the shoulder rest does come out. Um, if you guys uh, are want to see the shoulder rest, I'm still adjusting the fact that I'm not seeing a mirror image in front of me, so it's a little weird. When I need to move over to one side, I actually have to go to the other side, and it's sort of messing me up. But um, You can see this thing. We can change the angle here, change the angle here, change the angle here. I can turn this thing. See? I can turn this. Um, and then this goes up and down, so if you've got like a long swan neck, so you're one of those people that the, that you like your shoulders are only four feet off the ground, but you're six foot four. You can still play this violin um, because this raises way up. Or it, if you don't have no neck, it it hunkers down and you can play it like this. Um, oh yeah, let me see some of those, Susie. We got some custom colors right now. Um, Susie loves being on camera. That's why she's handing these things to me. Um, so. We do have some custom color silver. Oh, what am I doing? I can't see. I said so. I'm backwards. Silver. And what's this? Purple. Purple. I'm not the best person to talk about colors. Um, yeah, get the colorblind guy to talk about the colors. Great idea. Um, ooh, this is a trans blue. Wow, this is really pretty. I'm seeing this on the video. I'm not seeing it. In... Ooh, that is nice. And these are these are the same price too, right, Susie? Or is there an upcharge on these? No upcharge, and there's also white. White, no upcharge. Oh my goodness. Um, and you can get it in white too. So um, the white ones are really, really sharp. I did see a white one the other day. Um, super, super pretty. So that is the NS design. Um, okay. Really, really, really like this fiddle. Um, does not come with a bow. Pretty like no instrument really in this price category comes with a bow, and it's pretty uncommon for him to come with a case. Honestly, this is one of the few that does. So um, yes, I'm now going to switch over, and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be the YEV. So let me switch instruments. All right, hang this one back on the wall. Um, I was noticing when I listened to that pre-recorded video that the YEV was like a little flatter than the other one. Not in tone, but in pitch. And I think, um, 
I must have used a Canadian tuner or something. There was a, uh, it's, that's not true. It was a, uh, I thought maybe it was something lost in translation. Uh, yeah, Jamie had actually just set this violin up for me this morning. And of course, when we get them from Yamaha, the bridges are not, um, they're not cut, they're just stamped. And so Jamie has to hand shape each one of these bridges and the strings are loose when they come in. So it was the very first time that it had been tuned up and I tuned it to A440. And then apparently by the time I recorded it, it had gone a little flat. Um, these are also one of the loudest violins we have. And that's a, it's a really good thing for you guys to know that if you do have a YEV, which about a zillion of you do, um, on the back, there's this little button. And this button, when it's out, bypasses, you can see the button's out, it bypasses the volume knob. So that gives you full signal. However, my recommendation is to push that little button in and turn it down because these are really loud, like really, really, really loud. And in fact, they overdrive a lot of the systems that you plug them into. And so people will say, well, my YEV is all distorted and it's, you know, everything's crunchy and clippy and you go, yeah, man, you just, they're too loud. Uh, so you gotta turn them down a little bit, which, you know, never, nobody's ever complained usually about having too much signal. It's usually, I can't get my violin loud enough. Uh, in this case, honestly, it's probably better to keep it maybe three quarters, two thirds to three quarters volume because they, they are really loud. <laughs> That is the Yamaha YEV. Really, really like this violin. These things are hot too, by the way. I remember when they first brought us a prototype on these, we were stunned at how cool these things were. And then when they told us the price, we just we could not believe it. $610 now. It's actually gone up a little bit. When they first came out, uh, I think the four string was under $600. Um, but my gosh, $610 for the four string and 665. This is still one of the most insane values in the electric violin market. Um, they make these in the same factory that they make. Uh, Yamaha is a huge corporation, obviously. Um, they make these in the same factory that they make their drum shells. So they take the, the same technology that Yamaha has been using forever to bend wood for drum shells. Um, they use that same technology to bend this sort of Mobius strip thing here. Um, and these, it's actually a, a five layer laminate, I think, or three or five layer laminate on this. And you would think that like as thin as this wood is, that these things would be really fragile. And I think we've seen maybe two cases where they've been broken. One of them, uh, like they dropped it off the top of their truck and it landed in the road and this little thing broke. And the other one, uh, somebody stepped on it or something. I mean, it's like, you gotta work really hard to break this. I uh, won't say it's unbreakable because some of y'all will take that as a challenge. Um, but we've sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these, like by the truckload we're selling these things. And I think we've heard of two of them that broke. So um, that's one of the things that people always ask is, gosh, is, you know, is this thing super fragile? The answer is no, it's really not. Um, Yamaha's got their stuff together when it comes to manufacturing these things. Um, so just 
Wow, just a really stunning instrument, and they come in black, and as you can see in the picture here, they also come in natural, which is, uh, it's got two different colors of wood or three different colors of wood. Um, so a, a really, really nice instrument. We like these a lot. This is, uh, without a doubt, this is our best seller. Um, just the price point that you see here and the, the design, just a really fantastic instrument. Um, I'm going to go next to the Wood Violins Stingray SVX. So permit me to unplug this instrument and grab another one. I'm back. Uh, let me check to make sure this thing is still in tune. There we go. Did you guys enjoy that? Yeah, thanks. Um, oh, I do want to go back to one more thing in the YEV. Sorry. Um, does not come with a case, does not come with a bow. It actually comes to you in a cardboard box, believe it or not. It's the same cardboard box that it comes to us in. The difference is if you were to order direct from Yamaha, there's some assembly required. You're gonna have to cut that bridge and shape it and form it and install it. And, and, uh, and we do all that for you here, no charge. So um, our luthier Jamie does a bunch of these. He has got the process dialed in on four string and five string. So that's that. All right, uh, on the wood violins, these come in red, which is really hot. I like red, believe it or not, um, and black, four string and five string. All of the violins we're talking about today come in four string or five string, um, which is outstanding for an entry level instrument. My goodness, um, all of the manufacturers have really stepped up and said, yeah, we, we fully embrace um, five string technology. It's a thing. Uh, we sell more five strings than we do four strings. Um, it's, you know, once people have made the leap from the, tr the super hyper traditional acoustic instrument, once they make the leap to electric, it's really not that much of a leap to go, well, why don't I just go extend a range while I'm at it? Um, Cause you can cover violin and viola parts all with the same instrument. And if you're an improviser, you can, uh, you've got that, that extra fifth underneath, man, makes a huge difference. Um, and I was saying this morning on my preview too, that one of the nice things, even if you're playing classical literature, that low G, instead of your only option on that note to be, you know, an open G, you can now play it on the C string. Um, And you can play some double stops that your buddies can't play, right? That literally can't be done on a four string instrument. You can't play a double stop with two notes that only appear on the G string. But now you can! Woo! Look how much cooler you are. So, all right, so here's the, uh, the Wood Stingray SVX. So I really like this instrument. It's got sort of a, almost a shimmer to it that really sounds uh, crazy. I, I really like this. It's a very, very identifiable sound. When you hear a Stingray, you're like, that's definitely a Stingray. It's not a, it's not any other instrument. Um, 
Yeah. So hey, lots of uh, lots of comments here. Akiva. Yeah, my friend Akiva is actually he actually does play left handed. Usually when you watch the uh, these live streams, people's uh, their cameras are flipped around, right? So you can't. Um, it looks like they're all playing left handed. And a lot of my previous live streams, it looks like I'm playing left handed. I'm not. Akiva actually is. He has a custom left handed Viper. Um, oh, here's another one. My friend Jim. Um, click on here. Yeah, once you play an extended range instrument, it's hard to go back. That is absolutely true. Um, I play, actually, for most of my money gigs now, I'm playing a six string. Um, even with a five now, I find myself reaching for that F string, and it's not there, and it makes me sad. Um, but I played I played exclusively five string for about 20 years. I started when I was one. That's how old I am. Uh, no. Uh, I, yeah, I played exclusively five string for about 20 years. So five's pretty comfortable for me. Um, I talked to somebody on the phone today that was wanting to go from a four straight to a six. And uh, he's got a lot of guts. I think he's going to make it, though. Um, but it, um, yeah, so going to an extended range, I think it takes... Some people just pick it up and start playing it. And some people, it takes a few hours to get used to it. Um, I think I generally tell people five to 10 hours of practice time on the instrument, and it's going to feel pretty much like home to you. Um, and of course, now that nobody's working, uh, you can get that five to 10 hours by, you know, tomorrow. So uh, question, something about the wireless systems in those violins, troubles that could appear. Yes, excellent question, and I will get to that. Um, each of the three instruments that I've tried so far, I don't know if you're watching uh, the beginning, but I've tried a Wave, a YEV, and an SVX. All three of these are passive instruments, and they all work just fine with the little bud style wirelesses like the, uh, the Yamaha, uh, the Yamaha Line 6, same company. The Line 6 G10 works just fine with that, and it works just fine with the Boss, I'm trying to remember the, the model name, uh, the Boss... S, this one, the little boss, what is that, WL20. Yeah, the WL20. So it, it works just fine with both of those. Um, generally, it's the active instruments that will give you trouble sometimes. And then, um, so like uh, the active Yamahas, the SV200s, they, um, they sometimes will give you a squeal. There's like an interference that somehow either the wireless or the instrument are not shielded well enough that they can sense each other and you get a wee. Um, so that'll happen. It doesn't happen with passive instruments and the YEV, the SVX and the wave are all passive instruments. Okay. Um, you can see prices on this. This one does come with a case like pretty much every instrument in this price range. It does not come with a bow. Um, the next instrument we're going to try, though, the Geva, and we just debuted this thing last week. Allow me a second to switch instruments here. We just showed you guys the Geva for the first time last week. Um, this is an active instrument, and it does give a little bit of interference with the G10. So... Um, it does unfortunately give a little bit of interference with the with the G10. Um, it's one of the reasons I'm wired up this week so that it's just the same for everybody. Um, this is the five string on this one does come in just above a thousand dollars, but we left it in the under a thousand price category because the four string is eight ninety one. It is under well under a thousand dollars. Does not come with a case. Does not come with a bow. But this is an active instrument. You can see the preamp on the back. Um, it's got treble and bass control. It also has a headphone jack right here. So it's the only instrument in this price category that you can do silent practice without having to have an external headphone amp. Okay. Um, now, honestly, well, I say that I actually, a lot of times just practice my electric violin without plugging it in. I just play it. Um, and, um, I mean, it works just fine. It, uh, it's a little different when you're wearing headphones or you're playing through an amp or something. But honestly, if I'm trying to just get, I've been playing long enough that I know what it's going to sound like. If I play it unplugged, I know what it's going to sound like plugged in. I've been doing this long enough. So I don't necessarily have to have it plugged in all the time. Um, 
And, you know, if you're, if you're shedding left hand stuff, right hand, you know, just some of the things that you're shedding, you don't necessarily have to have headphones for it. You can totally just play the instrument, not plugged in. It's fine. Okay. Um, so this is the Gava Novita. Like I said, we just got this one in. Um, really, really like this instrument. I've never played that before. <laughs> that was fun. I have to switch back and forth between all these instruments so often that um, it does take me a second to kind of get accustomed to what the angles and stuff are on each one. Uh, once you have picked an instrument and you play on that instrument most of the time, you sort of go back and forth between that one and your acoustic four string, the transition happens much, much easier. Uh, when you have to play 20 different instruments on any given day, uh, sometimes the uh, string distances and all that may sneak up on you a little bit. One of the other things I want to mention with this instrument is that it does come with Whitner pegs, which is, oh, what a game changer. Holy cow. That makes things so much better when you have these Whitner pegs. It's basically, um, these are, what that means is that these are geared pegs. This looks like a regular interference fit peg where you got to push it in, Jim, you got to say a bad word or something to make it tune. These just turn. Um, they're geared on the inside. There's a little planetary gear inside there. And it is a radically different experience to tune your instrument. Um, the NS Design Instruments, uh, these have a, um, this is a 40 to 1 ratio tuner that's in here. Again, a far superior experience to tune in with a stinking peg. Uh, now, the nice thing about the Yamaha and the Wood Violins instrument is that they are a little more inexpensive than this one. And our luthier, Jamie, can install Whitner pegs or Perfection pegs. It's the other brand of these. Uh, he can install those here in our shop, and the price is roughly $200 uh, to have that done. So if you want to get a, a YEV or a, an SVX and have those Whitner pegs installed, when we send it to you, we can totally do that. Just let us know, and we can have that done. Um, I'm set this instrument down. And let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. So the Gava, you see the price on there does not come with a case, does not come with a boat. It's going to come to you in a box as well. So, all right, let me raise this thing back up. Um, and let's do this. I'm going to put this question in. Question about the wave. I haven't read this yet. Hope you didn't cuss too much. Um, I have a question about the wave. Have you guys ever come across an issue caused by a rosin buildup in the electronics below the space where the bridge comes up through the instrument? Um, yeah, I mean, that could potentially be an issue if you are using like way too much rosin. I know some of the country players out there want to, uh, they want it to look like their pig pen from the peanuts, you know, playing in this cloud of dust up there. Um, I'm a very, very sparing user of rosin. I don't use much. Um, and so the honest truth is I have certainly never had that issue. We have maybe, gosh, I mean, we see a lot of stuff come in here. We had a wave, I'm trying to remember back. We had a wave violin come in here one time that had so much rosin on it. I mean, it was, it was, it was like built up on the instrument, probably 
that much, like a lot of rosin. There's probably two cakes of rosin on the top of this instrument. And the pickup system on that instrument still worked just fine. Um, I can't say that it's not a potential issue that you'd get so much of that gummy stuff down inside where the pickup element is inside the instrument that it could possibly interfere with that. Um, I won't say that that's not possible. I'd say I have not seen it. And uh, gosh, that would be a whole lot of rosin. Um, to those of you who are using that much rosin, why? You don't need that much rosin. Less. Less is more. And I don't always say that because I like to shred. More is more. But with rosin, less is more. Um, I probably do like five swipes of rosin on my bow for about every two or three hours of playing. You really, that's about all you need, honestly. Um, if you feel like you need more than that, you might need a better bow. That might be the next thing to do is upgrade the bow. Um, here's another question. Let's see. Is there a chance to improve the pickup of those violins or is it better to buy a better violin? Um, well, generally, um, let's see, on the YEV, it wouldn't be super hard to put a different pickup on there. On the wood violins instrument, it wouldn't be super hard to put a different pickup on there because they're both bridge pickups. Um, the NS design would be pretty stinking complicated to change the pickup. And on the GAVA, um, the way that pickup works is that it is, um, they've just taken a regular violin bridge. See if I can show you this. They've taken a regular violin bridge and they just install, gosh, Again, I'm not, I'm not doing well with this uh, reverse mirror image thing. It's just almost like a Cremona pickup that's stuck in the bridge. Um, I guess you could, in theory, change that out relatively easily. Um, I don't know how well it would pair with a different pickup. Like if you wanted to put a Fishman or something in there, I don't know. Um, because they've sort of paired it with um, the electronics and the preamp to, to make that work the best. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm... Honestly, I'm pretty happy with the, the pickups on each one of these violins. I think they sound good. Um, for anybody who came in late, I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to play some pre-recorded audio for you guys so we can make this, we'll make this transition happen a little faster and you can hear an A-B comparison right off the bat. Um, so we're going to go, we're going to start with a Novita. And this is, I just recorded this like a couple hours ago today, so... <coughs>
right, so hopefully you guys could hear like a pretty quick and direct comparison between the different instruments. Um, so um, I'm actually just going to fire up a little track here and just do some playing, and then I'll switch violins while this thing's running. So, a little bit of that. Um, any other questions? You guys got some questions about any of these instruments? The under $1,000 price category is um, surprisingly good. Uh, I, I had somebody ask me on Instagram today. I put up a picture of one of the Gava violins last week. And they saw the price and went, $8.91? That's got to be a terrible violin. And, you know... Far be it from anybody on social media to have a bit of a, a, uh, a complex about, um, you know, an elitist complex. I would never expect anybody on social media to have an elitist complex. Um, and there's, but there is a little bit of that, right? And I was a guy that always played pretty expensive instruments. I was always a, a Viper guy. Um, and when I first started working here, 
my job was to go through and like play all these violins and get acquainted with them. And the honest truth is I was expecting them to not be that good. It's like, well, I paid like three or $4,000 for my Viper, a $700 violin. I'm sure it's not going to be that good. Right. And I was blown away by how good the instruments are in the under a thousand dollar price category. Um, you know, a thousand dollar violin and a two thousand dollar violin. The two thousand dollar violin is not going to be twice as good. That's there's a law of diminishing returns. Um, you know, it might be forty percent better, fifty percent better, but it's not a hundred percent better. And the question is, how bad do you need that forty or fifty percent? Um, I make a living by playing my instrument, and um, the, one of the ways that I make sure I get called back is that my violin sounds banging all the time. It is the very best possible sound that I can get. My living depends on how good the instrument is. Okay. That would, for that reason, I'm willing to spend three or $4,000 to have the very best instrument that I can get. Okay. So I'm willing to spend it. Is it four times better than one of these thousand dollar violins? No, it's absolutely not four times better. So, um, it's all in, am I willing to spend 3000 extra dollars to get that extra 50% in quality, extra 40% in quality? I am. Not every person is going to be in that situation. If your budget is a thousand bucks, then uh, you can get an outstanding instrument for less than a thousand dollars. That's the truth. Um, so yeah, and you've got a lot of choices between the Gava and the Yamaha and the NS and the Wood. Um, the personalities of the tones are very different. And I think you guys are going to hear that, uh, both when I'm playing here for you now and the, the pre-recorded stuff I did, the tonal personalities are very different and each one is going to strike a player in a different way. Um, each of these violins is relatively light. Uh, the lightest, um, I didn't weigh them, but if I just had to guess which one feels to me, the lightest is going to be the wood and the Yamaha. Uh, the NS and the Novita are going to be a little bit heavier, but when I say a little bit heavier, I mean that they're both like maybe a pound and a half. So um, the the wood and the Yamaha may be going to be just over a pound, and the, the, the heavier of the two are going to be, you know, we're talking like a third of a pound difference. It's really not that big a difference. None of these instruments I think I would classify as heavy. Um, so they're all relatively lightweight. The Novita is the only one that has a battery in it, um, which increases the weight a little bit, but it also has a headphone jack on there, which is kind of a nice feature. So that's what's going on with that. Um, if you guys have some more questions, dump them in the comments section and I'll get to those as we're going through here. But I had some other things that I wanted to sort of show you guys. We have a YouTube channel that is um, really good. <laughs> Uh, I'll say that myself. I think it's really good. Our, this is what our YouTube channel is. If you go to um, youtube.com slash electric violin shop, or you can just search an electric violin shop, you can see we've got tons and tons of content there. Um, obviously, we put up the live streams. Um, we will copy this live stream over to YouTube. Some of you may be actually watching it on YouTube right now. Um, so, it is on our YouTube channel is full of lots and lots of super, super useful information. And um, let me get to the next one here. We have a series on there called From Classical to Radical that I think is going to be super helpful for a lot of you guys. This is a video series that we did a, a couple of years ago where we talk about a lot of things that um, like people that are classically trained players and they know a lot about playing the violin, but they don't know a whole lot about plugging in. Well, we did this whole from classical to radical series and there's 30, 25 videos in this series. Um, everything from about how to go electric to different effects to how to do basic improv to uh, we'll, we'll talk about connecting to the soundboard. We'll talk about EQ and how to use it. Um, we'll talk about distortion and some of the different techniques that you use for distortion. Um, this whole series is really a primer. If it's your first time plugging in with a violin, these 25 videos should make a huge difference in your life. Um, 
And then I also want to make you guys aware of our Instagram feed. Um, you can see we are on Instagram. Uh, it's under at electric violin shop. And you can see we've got tons of content there on Instagram that we don't put on Facebook. So if you follow us on Facebook and you follow us on Instagram, this is totally separate and different content that we're putting on each one where a lot of people, when they go on Facebook, if you follow them on Facebook and Instagram, you see everything they do twice. You're like, okay, I think I already saw that. Um, we treat them as different platforms. So the information that is here on Facebook is different from the information that is on Instagram. Um, and then also we put videos, we do share these live streams on YouTube, but we also put other videos on YouTube that you will not find on Facebook. So it's, it's worth following us on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, because it's all different information on each of those platforms based on how we feel that platform best helps us communicate with you guys. Um, so that's what's going on there. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, you can dump them in the comments section here, and we're happy to answer those questions after the fact. You can email us at uh, info at electricviolinshop.com, or you can contact us on any of our social media platforms. So as always, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, we will see you next week. Um, and uh, oh my, I was about to sign off. Can I do a quick through, a playthrough with the NS and the, and the YEV with the backing track? I reckon I can. I've got just another few minutes here. Um, you're gonna have to be patient. It's gonna take me a second to hook all this up. Um, how, do they, how do they fit in the mix? Very well. How you like that? There's my review on that. Um, this backing track is actually sort of, it was a, uh, it's, it's one of my, it's not one of my tunes yet, but it will be at some point. Uh, it's going to be a tune called Nothing to See Here. Um, and I've got, this is sort of, these are like the concept tracks right now. Um, take this to my producer, but the whole concept, and I actually played part of my written stuff at the beginning, and I was obviously just scrambling around at the end. Um, but the idea behind this track, and I'll play some of the uh, stuff that I've written too, is that uh, we're in a key of C, and I'm gonna make myself use all 11 chromatic tones except C. Can't use a root. So, um, all right. See if it's gonna go. Maybe it'll go, maybe it won't go. I don't know. How about now? I can hear that. I can hear it, I can feel it. Can you feel it? I'm gonna go ahead and stop there because this is from a certain tune. Again, this thing that we had just put the strings on this thing this morning and it's starting to settle a little bit flat. Um, 
But uh, yeah, that's what's going on there. And I was trying to not play anything that I'd played before. And uh, I actually accidentally landed on C a few times. I apologize. It won't happen again. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's the YEV and the Wave. I'm going to actually go back and play these videos again for you real quick. So you can, you can hear the instruments that we did uh, earlier today. Um, and we can just go one to the next, to the next, to the next. So that's that. You guys can hear going from one instrument to the next to the next, um, sort of what the, the personality differences are in there. So again, I hope you guys enjoy uh, your quarantine as best as you can. Please, please, please stay home. Please stay home. We're, uh, we're very, very um, grateful to you guys for staying uh, at home and ordering instruments online. We are here to get these things shipped out to you. Um, Again, we're super isolated here. There's just a couple of us that work here, and two of the people who work here are married to each other, so um, they were going to be infecting each other one way or the other. Um, but yeah, so we're we're still we are closed to people able to walk into the shop. Obviously, um, nobody can come into the shop right now, but we are still shipping instruments that you guys order online, and we're so grateful for you guys doing that. We're a small business that, like everybody else, is kind of struggling to keep things going right now in a really crazy world. Um, so yeah, and enjoy your time at home. Just take this time to say, Hey, all the stuff that I wanted to do, but didn't have time because I was too busy going out and doing stuff. Uh, now you got the time. So, um, and I also want to say too, that you're going to have days where you don't feel productive and you don't feel motivated and you don't feel like you're ready to take on all that stuff. Perfectly normal. We're musicians because we feel things pretty deeply. Um, and if you're having days where you're just like, eh, I just can't today, man. I just, I don't have the, I don't have it in me. It's cool. Just take a day off, right? It's, it is what it is. Um, we don't want to fall into the pattern and make that every day, but if you're having sort of a bad chi day, just take a bad chi day, man. You know, when you look at social media, it looks like everybody's being so productive. Remember, you're only seeing the part of the day that that person was productive. You know, it might have been 18 hours sort of laying in bed watching whatever everybody's watching right now. Something about a tiger. I don't know. I don't have Netflix. Um, but... Um, yeah, if you need a day for Chi to just sort of take that day off, take that day off. This is hard on everybody. But um, thank you so much for doing what you can to keep the spread of this thing down and so we don't overwhelm our healthcare system. Um, I know we're trying to keep the economy rolling and keep everybody alive at the same time. Um, so let's, let's do all this together, okay? We'll see you guys next week with another topic. And it's, uh, it's going to be time for us to sign off. All right, next week.